Tired of squeaky wheels? Then just ignore them. This is the Monday Line. I'm Dennis Campbell. Now, for two weeks, the media oxygen has been sucked dry by a 29-year-old megalomaniac Korean man-child dictator. He's threatening the USA and most of his neighbors with nuclear annihilation to prove he indeed has a member inside of his pants, regardless of size. Now, his behavior has been that of a three-year-old rolling on the supermarket floor, screaming and crying. He's in a tantrum because his mom won't buy chocolate crunchy cereal now, and the Western media has completely enabled him. Now, we interviewed two guests for the Worldview show this week, the noted nuclear scientist Dr. Rebecca Johnson, and she was talking about North Korean bluff bluster and the threat of a nuclear winter, and the Progressive News Network's Rick Spizak. He spoke of the crazy defense expenditures in the USA and how this level of noise just keeps the industrial military complex humming along. Winding down war in Afghanistan? Then it must be time to stir things up in the Pacific theater. Well, at least they postponed launching missile tests from California to further heighten these tensions. Now, while some of the mainstream media try to ignore this tempest in a teapot, others have already created the graphics and grave-sounding theme music. Andy Borowitz of the satirical The Borowitz Report in the New Yorker magazine, though, hit the nail on the head with this headline and text. Kim Jong-un moves Transformers collection to border. From Pyongyang, this is the Borowitz Report, in a move that has further ratcheted up tensions on the Korean Peninsula, North Korean dictator today moved his entire collection of Transformer action figures to the Korean border. According to sources familiar with the size and scope of the collection, which is to believed to be the largest in Asia, the Mercurial Kim began assembling it when he was either eight or nine. In Washington, an intelligence source reported that satellite photos have confirmed thousands of Transformers massing on the southern border. We're seeing no Autobots, just tons and tons of Decepticons. Kim himself confirmed the Transformers mobilization today on state television, announcing, I am Megatron, followed by an unintelligible roar. And the latest development in North Korea follows published reports that Kim Jong-un may be trying to obtain a lightsaber. Has anyone bothered to look at a map? If man-child Kim Jong-un were to detonate a nuclear device within a thousand miles of Pyongyang, the fallout cloud could easily reach Beijing, Tokyo, and even Hong Kong. Indeed, the affected areas would contaminate the rest of Japan, not affected by Fukushima, southern Russia, most of industrial northeastern China, the tiny U.S. Army base, uh, I'm sorry, rather, island of Guam, and the Philippines not to mention blowing back on his own nation and people. Now, as Dr. Johnson explained, even a bomb slightly larger than Hiroshima or Nagasaki would cause hundreds of thousands of deaths immediately from the flash and the burns, and the fallout would cause hundreds of thousands more within three years of detonation. And because now cities are so built up with concrete structures, it would create a nuclear pulverized dust cloud that would block out the sun. Now, while that might seem good news that would slow global warming, we would see an immediate drop in temperatures, deteriorating rapidly into a nuclear winter that would devastate global agriculture. It's a small wonder, then, that China tried to rein in their sponsored state. But Kim is determined to make even more noise, sending two missiles to the southern coast, most likely the only two mid-range missiles he has. And it's highly unlikely they can deliver a nuclear bomb either inside or outside of the region. So say hello to nuclear war in South Korea? Why risk a further heightening of tensions? Because he can. Kim, like his grandfather and father before him, knows the value of making noise to extort food and other strategic items out of the West. He's fighting for control and respect of a military that feared his grandfather. Also, some argue that it's good for the modern U.S. military-industrial complex to peddle this be-afraid-of-nukes meme, especially towards Asia and the Middle East. And in the Middle East, ironically, Iran has no capability, no enriched plutonium, no warheads, no missiles, no tests, yet we give Ahmadinejad all kinds of oxygen and media attention by setting both red lines and ultimatums. So what if instead the world just ignored these petty little tyrant men altogether and did not give them either the press or attention? 
What if they treated them like my sister does certain behaviors in men? Now, that may sound strange, but we were walking together years ago in Beverly Hills when this puny little man screeched the tires of a Ferrari to a stop at a posh hotel. He tossed the keys to the doorman as his five-foot-two-inch rotund frame waddled into the lobby with a B-movie bombshell blonde hurrying to catch up in her six-inch heels. And my sister grunted derisively and said, PMS. Perplexed, I looked at her and she explained, Petite Male Syndrome. Now, if the world's media would just ignore these two petite men, let them fight their own internal battles for survival, and treated them as derisively as my sister did in Beverly Hills, we'd all be better off than listening to some Fox News actress attempt to question someone miles above her pay grade. Ignoring or confronting those were the only ways to stop a bully in the schoolyard. Confronting has definite risks as just a test of testosterone. So why not try ignoring these PMS dictators? Just let all of the media oxygen and attention dry up, and then see how quickly they do as well. It's certainly worth a try.